Hello and welcome to this house tutorial. Today, we're going to build this pumpkin house. It contains everything you need for a survival base, and it even has a secret entrance. Or maybe not so secret, seeing as everyone who watches this tutorial probably knows where it is. These are the materials you will need for this build. There is also a complete list of materials in the description. The first layer is shaped like an oval. Start at the front and make it five blocks wide. Add a diagonal block to each end and make the sides three blocks long. Add two more diagonal blocks and add the back. Layer two is an octagon. Start by extending the front out by two blocks. The sides each only extend out by one block, but widen them to five blocks. Extend the back out by two blocks just like the front. And extend the other side out by one block just like the previous side. Connect all the diagonals and fill this layer in because this will be the floor of your pumpkin house. Layer 3 extends the sides by one more block each, but they should still be five blocks wide. The front and back do not extend anymore, but widen them to seven blocks wide. Connect the corners diagonally and you should be left with another oval. For layer 4, widen the front and the back to nine blocks wide, and widen the sides to seven blocks wide. Connect them diagonally, and you will have a more squarish shaped oval. Layers five through eight are identical to layer four, so just stack up four more layers to a total of five layers. Layer nine is identical to layer three, so shrink the front and the back back down to seven blocks wide, and the sides back down to five blocks wide and then connect them diagonally. Layer 10 is identical to layer two, so retract the sides in by one block, leave the front and the back where they are, but shrink them down to five blocks as well, connect the corners diagonally, and fill in the octagon so the opening matches layer one, which is also layer 11. Close the ceiling with layer 11, which is identical to layer 1. The front and back are 5 blocks wide, the sides are 3 blocks wide, and they are connected by one diagonal block in each corner. I can't give you specific block-by-block -block instructions for the stem because it's supposed to be a random organic shape, but what I did is I started by placing a cross on the top where the stem connects to the body of the pumpkin, and then I started building diagonally like this, so it was leaning diagonally to the right, but also pointing slightly forward at a diagonal. You should make your stem thick enough to look like it belongs on a pumpkin this big. So I made mine two blocks thick at least in all places. You can make yours even thicker if you want. Or if you really want, you can make it long and wiry, though personally I don't like that very much. Frankly, you can do whatever you want for your stem because this is your house and your pumpkin, and you should make yours unique to you and your style. Now for the fun part, the face. Scaffold your way up so you can see what you're doing. Now on the left side, go down two blocks from the top, one block from the left, and cut out three blocks in this pattern. Do the same on the other side, and now you have two eyes. Count down three blocks from the top and cut out a nose, two blocks vertically. Lower yourself a little bit. Now count down one block from the nose and cut out the mouth. You can kind of do whatever you want here, but this is my pattern. And now we have turned our pumpkin into a jack-o'-lantern with a sinister smile. And now to get inside, let's build our secret entrance. And to accentuate just how secret this secret entrance is, I even built a path to it. Ha <laughs> ha! Place a trapdoor here or there, it doesn't matter. There's a trick to this. When you go under a trapdoor and you right-click, you enter crawl mode. What this allows you to do is move in, Break this block, place the ladder here, and you are now inside the jack-o'-lantern. Finish it off by placing a trapdoor here, and you have a secret entrance into your house. And now we will begin on the interior work. You can do your own thing for the interior if you want, but if not, buckle up and get ready to build. First, we will light up the jack-o'-lantern with a fireplace. Find the center, place down your campfire, and on top of your campfire, place your cauldron. Now, I know that's a bit of magic during Halloween, but the cauldron shouldn't be floating. So build a cage around your fire so you don't step in it. And now grab your oak fences 
and we're going to build a holder for this cauldron. Just like this. Grab your chain, and now the cauldron is hanging from the holder. Next up, to turn this spooky house into a spooky home, we will place the sleeping area. Start by placing your bed, place your lectern down, grab your dark oak stairs and make a chair, and now build up your bookshelves around your bed, just like this. Support it with your oak stairs. Now you have a little bed nook. Next, we will build our crafting station. So go to the back, grab your crafting table, place it down, and then place a barrel on each side with two blocks of space in between. Grab your remaining trapdoors and use those to make a tabletop, and then build them up to create a second level, like a shelf. With that done, grab your grindstone, place it on the far left, grab your brewing stand, place it on the far right, and now grab your pots, place one here, one there, and put whatever you like into them. I have a bamboo and a warped fungus. On the upper level, oh, <laughs> did not mean to put that on my head. Grab the skulls, place one skull facing slightly left. Oh, I'm wearing it again. The other skull facing slightly right. Place one more flower pot up there and place your cherry sapling inside it. Now flank all of that with your pots. If you have any pottery sherds, this would be a great place to use them, but you don't have to. You can use plain pots if that's what you have access to. Finish it off by placing some candles. You can use any color you like. I'm using purple. You can light it if you want. I'm not lighting it just because I like the aesthetic, but you are welcome to light it if you would like more light in your base. Next up, every base needs furnaces. So place your furnaces right here. And now that we've started filling in this nook, let's fill it in the rest of the way with barrels. So place two there. Place four here. And I'll place double chests up above like so. And yes, I totally just used chests as scaffolding. Fight me. And now we will construct our enchanting station. Place down your remaining bookshelves and create a book nook like so. There we go. Grab your enchanting table, place it down in the middle, and you should have access to level 30 enchantments. Now place your anvil and your grindstone like so. And now you have everything you need in your enchanting station. Every survival base needs storage, so let's add a basic storage system. We have this awkward corner to work with, but we're going to make it work as follows. Place a chest here, place a double chest, another double chest, top it off with some more double chests and another single chest right here. And now we've turned this awkward corner into a rather attractive storage area. So do the same thing on this side, place down that chest, more double chests, and now we have our storage system set up. You have three remaining barrels, place them here. We now have a completed survival base, but we have a few more things to do. So let's decorate a little bit more. Let's place one of our decorated pots here, the other one here, grab your flower pots. And this is a neat little trick you can do that not many people know about. You can place your flower pots inside the decorated pots. Now grab your torch flowers, if you have them, and place them into those pots. And look at that. Honestly, you can use whatever kind of flower you want as long as it fits into a flower pot. I just like torch flowers because they look awesome. Now let's place down some carpets. Place six carpets over by the sleeping area, lime carpets. Place the remaining three here. And I would have placed them here, but if we did, it would block the bookshelves from serving their purpose of powering up our enchanting table. So instead, I will knock out these two blocks and place lime wool there instead. Now we have 20 black carpets remaining, so place 10 on this side, place 10 more on this side. Now we have a jukebox, let's plop it down right there and put some candles on it. And that's it. The interior of your jack-o'-lantern pumpkin house is completed. And if I do say so myself, it looks really nice. Let's talk about the landscaping. It is entirely optional and it's entirely up to you how you do it. 
But what I did, if you want to take inspiration from me, is I used crimson funguses, pitcher plants, and used bone meal which brought out blue orchids because of the swamp biome, and also made the grass look overgrown which gave a great aesthetic to our jack-o'-lantern house. I also touched up the path which led to our not-so-secret entrance and illuminated the path with some torches on fence posts. One potential problem that may arise is once you put the interior in, the face gets harder to see. You can remedy that by putting black concrete behind the face. Of course, the trade-off is now you can't see out of your house. And now, as you see, I built this pumpkin house out of orange concrete, and I understand that concrete may not be the easiest resource to get a lot of, especially in large quantities. You could also use red sandstone, although that's admittedly more difficult to get your hands on, or acacia. And both of these materials give you access to stairs and slabs, which allow you to do some more intricate things with the face. So you have the option of using those. The trade-off, of course, is the color, because orange concrete is more orange than those. You could also potentially use orange wool, but I personally didn't like the way that looked. So, pick your poison. And that concludes this tutorial! Thank you so much for watching! If you enjoyed this video enough to construct a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin house in your own world, be sure to show your appreciation by liking and subscribing, because I have several more Halloween tutorials coming up soon. And also let me know in the comments of any adjustments you may have made. I'd love to hear your feedback. Until next time, Happy Halloween!